The problems uh, in connection with the code who are located in this area. So from this point of view, uh, these regions are very, very important. And also this is uh, uh, where uh, yeah, is China is locating. Therefore, I think we should take special attention to these, um, um, these regions. So very welcome um, uh, the presenters. Uh, our first presenter will speak about um, uh, Poland. He is uh, Gracan Timek, as a professor of the Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences at the Polish Naval Academy. So very welcome, uh, Gracan, here. Then oh. it will be followed by Dragana Mitrovic, professor at the University of Belgrade, Faculty of Political Sciences. And he will, she will speak about the experiences uh, of Serbia and the region of uh, Southeastern Europe in this COVID um, uh, period. And last but not least, we will have uh, uh, Paulina Travert uh, from the University of Le Havre about uh, the post COVID-19 Russia economic and political issues. And last but not least, we will have a presentation as you heard, uh, by uh, Darvish, I think, because he has uh, the short transcript of what Bruno Dureski wanted to say to us, who is a professor at the National Institute of Languages and Eastern Civilization in Turin, and uh, he would speak about uh, uh, COVID-19 revealing the deadlock of the European model. So once again, uh, welcome to everybody. And uh, now I would like to give the floor to Marco. Uh, um, Anna Maria, present yourself, please. Pre introduce yourself. Oh, 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 excuse me. Yes, I am Anna Maria Artner. I am, I am a researcher in Hungary, in Hungary at the Institute of World Economics. And I am also a professor at the Milton Friedman University. And I am very much interested in the rights of Asia and all the uh, problematic concerning the global south. Also, I am from Europe, uh, from a uh, from a semi-peripheral country, from Hungary. Thank you, Anna Maria. So we can. Uh, uh, I'm Marco Riccieri. I'm the Secretary General of uh, Eurispes Institute in Rome. It's an institute for political, economic, and social um, studies. Um, so we can uh, start with Gracian Cimek, the first speaker. Good morning. Uh, Good morning. Uh, record, uh, pay attention to the time, eh? 20 minutes, OK? Yes, it will be very good. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, uh, I am Gracian Cimek from the north of Poland at the coast of the Baltic Sea, as you can uh, hear now. And I would uh, give you a, a, a speech about Poland during, during Corona crisis era. And, uh, that, and now I want to share with my presentation. And the coast would be silent. Is it seen good? Do you see my, yes, it's, it's presentation? Fine. my presentation? Oh, okay, thank you very much. So I am very glad to be virtually here for a fourth time. My last visit uh, was in February 2020, just before the start of coronavirus, um, uh, uh, corona crisis. So I was very lucky. But in my uh, presentation, I want to speak about rather sad processes of Poland during corona crisis. I will start with a brief methodological um, uh, quote taken from Professor Novak. Mm. 
microbes and the threat of pandemics make it clear that the solipsistic fantasies of the postmodernists can only last as long as the microbes do not cause a rapid awakening in the desert of the real. And it is worth to add that the real is the system of global capitalism. Now let's have a look on the definition of the basic categories. Corona crisis era. It is a period initiated by the biological development of the virus of the so-called COVID-19, as well as the knowledge of its appearance and spread from the beginning of February 2020. Manifested in biological, psychological, social, ideological, economic, and political, geopolitical phenomena and uh, uh, processes. Uh, sorry, we still still only can see the cover slide, only the first slide. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. Now is better? Yes, yes, yes thank yes. you. Okay. And next uh, category is uh, Caesaris, cre created by Antonio Gramsci. It means the tendency of democratic regimes to manifest authoritarian tendencies at the time of crisis of capitalism, when elected institutions like parliaments recede into the background. Instead, circumstances consolidate the position of bureaucratic power, civil, both civil and military, the financial, the church and other organizations relatively independent of public opinion. In times of stability, all these institutions agree to leave democratic institutions in power, but it is different in the times of crisis. And uh, please uh, have a look on the context uh, of my uh, speech, which have seven, seven uh, points. Uh, in terms of evolutionary statistical data, in Poland, from 3rd uh, January of 2020 to the uh, 28th January of 2022, there have been almost 4,800,000 confirmed cases of COVID-19 with almost 105 deaths reported to the World Health Organization. Uh, uh, as of 23 uh, January 2022, a total of uh, almost five, one million vaccine uh, doses have been administered, uh, produced by Pfizer, AstraZeneca, Johnson & Johnson, and Moderna. It is almost 60% of whole population of uh, Poland. Uh, from the geopolitical uh, perspective, it's worth to add that even if the European Medicine Agency had registered the Russian Sputnik V, Poland had no intention of buying it, unlike Hungary did. And uh, let's uh, look at the good indicator, which is the number of deaths per 100,000. The most on the world, uh, in the world is Peru, as you can see, 621. In Europe, Bulgaria, 475. Uh, Hungary, 422. Uh, Czech Republic uh, 347 and Poland have uh, 277 almost number of deaths per 1000 according to the data of World Health Organization. Uh, but uh, at the down of presentation, you uh, could see more developed countries, <laughs> the data show us in, in the healthcare system because Sweden and Germany are uh, much more less than Poland and Belarus have uh, only 66 and China you uh, can see um, how a low number uh, was. Recently, however, only Bulgaria has overtaken us in Europe more than 20 deaths per million inhabitants. In Poland now there is uh, one uh, 11.8 per million. For comparison, in Germany now, three per two per million deaths. Uh, uh, in the Omicron stricken United Kingdom, less than two deaths per million. So now our situation in Poland is, is very, very bad. Since the beginning of pandemic, Poland has fallen by 22 places below Indian Kenyan healthcare uh, index. Poland uh, is now on the 66th position. 
uh, at this uh, at this uh, index. Uh, so far, Poland has 29, uh, uh, 219 deaths from COVID, and it is more important data: 150,000 were redundant due to the paralysis of the healthcare system. For comparison, the defensive war in September 1939 uh, in Poland against uh, uh, Germany consumed 66 thousands of deaths. Here you can see uh, interesting uh, data because uh, it is about the deaths on COVID-19 against the background of uh 110 surplus deaths from october 2020 to may 2021 uh, at the top you can see the number 253 uh, it is a typical number of deaths during the period uh, uh, 2016 and 2019 uh, that is be, uh, be, be before the corona crisis uh, started and uh, it is this number are more than uh, than typical number uh, before. So pure death from COVID was 14,307 uh, uh, and surplus deaths without deaths from COVID uh, almost 100,000 uh, of uh, deaths. Uh, so uh, you can see that this uh, um, uh, lowest number is from COVID and this is uh, from uh, uh, structure of health system uh, because not only from COVID uh, but also from other illness uh, may, may be sometimes connected with 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 with, with COVID. And and uh, finally, uh, when it comes to data, we uh, focused on the total number of deceased. Um, in, in the years 2016-2019, an average of 403,000 people died anyway. In the first, uh, first uh, year of corona crisis, 2020, about 486, it is uh, 83,000 more. And in last year, 2021, about 519 thousands people died it's about 116,000 about above the average uh, of uh, year uh, before corona crisis this now it was it is it was the first year since the end of world war second in which more than half of million poles died as dr emphasized a uh, large role in these processes um, of high mortality was played by the collapse of the psyche of many patients with a state of isolation and aggressive propaganda in the media when it comes to the uh, political aspects of corona uh, crisis uh, at the top you can see prime minister Moria, uh, uh, mateusz morawiecki he was um, uh, the president of foreign bank previously and um, before he started to be a prime minister uh, of Poland governance, governor and advisor to the neoliberal government of uh, civil platform. Uh, the family cousin of Susan Wojcicki, president of YouTube. Uh, and it is uh, worth uh, to uh, remark that in the time of Corona crisis, this service began censorship of portals critical of the government about COVID. For instance, independent TV, which had over three uh 300,000 subscriptions uh, for the first months of pandemic the minister of health was a dr uh, shumovsky uh, dr shumovsky he uh, has been replaced by an economist adam Niedzielski, previously a money administrator in the national health fund a typical technocrat who does not reveal any sensitivity to the effects of this decision a horrible data i have already shown is at the doubt uh, you may look in his eye, <laughs> looks in his eye uh, now for a, a few uh, seconds. The main advisory center was the Prime Minister Medical, Medical Council, which did not keep records of its meeting, contrary to the procedures. Recently, when it began to be postulated to sign a uh, clause without conflict of interest between them and Big Pharma, 14 out of 17 people resigned. 
it turned out that as many as 12 of them were connected with corporations with big pharma. Interesting coincidence, you agree. As far as the parliamentary is concerned, the only critical force was the right wing populist confederation party, which defended liberal freedoms, the right to information, the freedom of assembly and expression, and freedom of choice in relation to vaccination. He has about 9% of supporters, uh, supporters uh, now. It is maybe also worth to highlight two more facts providing evidence for trial of Caesars uh, in Poland. Firstly, postal elections to the parliament in May 2021 were ordered, which violated the principles of democracy, especially secrecy and emergency. Public resistance stopped them, but at the end of the day, <coughs> 72 million of złotych were lost to print envelopes. Secondly, in October, a law banning abortion was deliberately introduced with expecting a harsh reactions. And it was. Its manifestation was the women's strike movement under the slogan, this is war, brought several hundred thousand people to the streets. As a matter of fact, the police were not as restrictive at the time as in the case of protesters against the methods of struggle the pandemic in Poland. In this way, at the risk of infecting many people, the governing of country created a proxy conflict. Now we will focus on the governmental handling of a, a, a pandemic. Although there were 50,000 flu patients in January, February, no one talked about the pandemic. I remember that. I also, also got very ill and managed to recover to come to the France um, uh, two and a half, uh, two years ago. <clears throat> With the introduction of the state of pandemic emergency on 14 uh, March 2022, uh, 2020, Throughout the country, the first restrictions of freedoms and human rights introduced began to apply. And it is indestructible that the, uh, um, uh, we can read the document uh, pr produced by the Ombudsman. And uh, this report uh, showed that the state has repeatedly violated the Constitution, which is the highest source of law, freedom, and civil rights. For example, by introducing epidemic states an administrative system to punish citizens for violating them, uh, to punish for attending gatherings, uh, to uh, hard pressure and threats to vaccinate, despite scientific evidence that those vaccinated against COVID-19 can infect other people with the uh, corona, uh, corona uh, uh, virus. <sighs> It's worth also what to add that the state has not provided an adequate number of medical staff and, uh, uh, and decent remuneration. There are no special funds for health. Field hospitals have been created at the high cost, so that associated with war would be conductive to a rising fear. Instead of visit, tell us. That's an, you, are at, you are at 15 minutes. You can continue, but you must know. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Instead of visits, uh, tele advice was introduced and hospitals and clinics were closed. Cardiac and oncological patients were not taken even when there are empty beds. So the main idea began to resemble Orwell's slogan. You can, you, you should hear this, hear it directly. The doctor does not want to examine the patient because they may be sick. As a result, Despite the fact the number of COVID patients accounted for only 1% of all, there were many as many as 2 million fever people hospitalized. Now let's have a look on uh, people's reactions and actions. And uh, here you have the, uh, a few um, pictures of most uh, important. Uh, in June 21, the Polish Association of Independent Doctors and Scientists was established whose mission is to free the profession from the oppression of the system and restore medicine based on evidence and not experts who may be associated with corporations. Uh, the face of it uh, was the Zbigniew Hawat, uh, former head of the Chief Sanitary Inspector and Deputy Minister of Health. Uh, second important uh, face was Dr. Ba Bondar, uh, Bodnar, here uh, at the right, who occurred uh, 8,000 people with the cheap and proven flu drug amantadine. And let's listen to me. 
month after the pandemic began, he wanted to get only 5 million uh, zlotys for research, but the government agency refused. Not only under pressure from independent media, the funds were allocated for research more than a year later, after uh, Poland bite uh, vaccines, millions of vaccines. Uh, here is the other movement, Kamratsky movement, uh, Heiflader uh, Veto, very interesting mo uh, regional movement, but I, uh, unfortunately I haven't got the time to uh, speak uh, uh, more about this uh, uh, social uh, movement. Uh, and I also haven't got time to speak about economical aspects, so let's jump to the uh, conclusion. The Corona crisis has revealed transformation from liberal democracy towards Caesarism in Poland. Basic features of freedom, reason, deliberation, the right to assembly, freedom of speech were negated. The fact that this is a part of global processes is convincing. The decision taken by the technocrats, the violation of the constitution has not met with criticism of United States and European Union. Therefore, it can be concluded that the pursuit of the interest of pharmaceutical corporations reveal how modern capitalism changed the political system to ensure its profits. The socialization of costs and the privatization of profits are now are how capitalism works. After all, once again, capitalism revealed his hypocrisy. He took away the welfare state and prosperity under the slogan of individualism, but since the beginning of 2020, unexpectedly started the pressure that for the sake of citizens will provide free vaccination with corporate products. The devastating effects of capitalism in Poland are the lack of treatment of hundreds of thousands of people, 150,000 exceed deaths, a life of humiliation, the taking away of constitutional rights, the lack of education and depression of children. In this situation, it is worth considering Professor Maria Szyszkowska postulate regarding a new human right, uh, the right uh, to choose the best form of medicine, including unconventional medicine. But new laws usually appear with the new order, and its arrival will also have to mean taking responsibility for the effects of the corona crisis, not only in Poland. But uh, currently, in Poland, there is a possibility of return of neoliberals who could unleash a new Greece, which will probably bring hundreds more victims. Uh, so it's time to change neoliberal para paradigm. Uh, uh, because it was it would be uh, good for all of us. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, our uh, next uh, speaker uh, is uh, Dragana. So the floor is yours. Thank you. I will also also try to share my screen with you. First, um, we see it now. Okay, just for, for some of you to read. Um, so obviously, I'm going to talk about the experiences from Serbia and the region of southeastern Europe when it comes to um, our experiences with. Um, COVID-19 pandemic and how our respective governments, uh, societies uh, reacted uh, during the, 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 the process. Uh, I will start, I, I, am I now sharing this World Health Organization chart with you? Oh, we, we see the original one. Uh, all right, I will um, then uh, uh, switch to the new one. Uh, can you now see the yes? The, oh, yes. Right. thank you. It is very useful one uh, because I will start with the uh, statistics, and um, it gives us a total overview overview what has been happening uh, and what is happening today. As of today, we have um, in, uh, decreased number of infected uh, persons with uh, over eleven thousand, almost eleven. 1,500, it was like 15, 16,000 last uh, week, uh, which means altogether uh, over 1 million and uh, seven, uh, 770 
almost 780,000 infected people. Unfortunately, we also had uh, uh, four, over 14,000 uh, deaths co uh, just um, by, by COVID or anywhere declared uh, people who declare to be dead uh, through being impacted by COVID. We could also see down here uh, that um, we have uh, like over 60 percentage of uh, people in Serbia. Uh, this is almost like a, a, a number of, of Serbian citizens uh, over um, 6,500,000 at the moment without Kosovo and Metohia. And uh, we also have that number of uh, people who have been um, vaccinated, which means that over something, over 60% of our population have been vaccinated with the two uh, doses. And of course, among those are especially elderly people who have been vaccinated uh, three times with the booster uh, dose uh, as well. Uh, anyway, if we look, um, this is, uh, these are two numbers, but like we, if we compare Serbia to the regional countries, we would see, of course, it's most uh, populated compared with like former uh, Yugoslav republics, but then we see you, you see the numbers, so I will not repeat what happened in Bosnia and Herzegovina, what happened in Montenegro, in Macedonia, North Macedonia, uh, also like in neighboring Albania, uh, Croatia, Slovenia, uh, Hungary, like uh, uh, almost the same number of infected people, but much more people who died uh, from COVID. I do not have the answer what is happening in Romania that has almost uh, three times more uh, citizens than we um, see has uh, this number of infected and, and that people, Bulgaria as well. Uh, I will also now share with you these two charts. These are, uh, I, I hope you now see this chart that is showing uh, how uh, pandemics actually, it goes only in Serbia, like epidemics in Serbia, COVID-19 developed. Mm, and uh, as you could see uh, at the beginning, it had very slow development and, that, and also that somehow continued but then we had these uh, huge waves that, and now we have the biggest one. See after like uh, New Year, Christmas holidays, winter holidays, uh, school uh, winter holidays, uh, et cetera. And uh, I will share the, the final one with you, the sad one. Uh, well, actually, this is about this um, also logarithmic scale that shows the, the cases, how it developed very slowly. Um, all right, I will now stop sharing and um, give you my analysis of, of what we have been experiencing in Serbia since the outbreak of the pandemic. As you all know, and we, you could see on that World Health Organization uh, map uh, of um, southeastern, but also partly central, western, eastern Europe, you've seen that Serbia uh, is located uh, at the terrestrial uh, crossroads. And as such, it, uh, it is very firmly interconnected with uh, uh, neighboring countries and with uh, um, and as an air hub, uh, thanks to Air Serbia, state-owned corporation, it is also air hub, and it is also connected with the Middle East and uh, much uh, um, and, and other countries far, far beyond our immediate uh, geographic reach. Uh, so, and Serbia remained open when it comes to the regime that uh, is. Uh, uh, that was put upon foreign citizens. Serbia remained almost totally 
opened. And at also there are other significant uh, moments that I would like to share with you today. Uh, some of which are that we have approximately, uh, well, probably several million of people living uh, all across the world with the Serbian origins and significant percentage of them having Serbian passports. But in immediate neighborhood, we have um, uh, at the beginning of the pandemics, and it's a terrific outbreak in, in Italy, in Austria, in Germany, in Switzerland, about uh, 400,000 citizens of Serbia uh, living and working in these countries returned to Serbia to sort of a safe haven because they, they anyway, they had to stay at home uh, obeying a lockdown and uh, they, would they would prefer to come back to Serbia and be upon its state on the uh, health system, obviously and somehow they felt more secure to return to Serbia. So they did. And that is how we imported our zero case from one lady from Switzerland. And generally we imported uh, COVID uh, pandemics and it was just unavoidable. And also uh, during the first two months, our state-owned um, uh, air company, Air Serbia, organized uh, a lot of charter uh, flights to collect our citizens, of which some totally irresponsibly went to a vacation in some, to some exotic destinations, but anywhere, somewhere studying or working abroad. And because the air traffic was obstructed, they couldn't return home. So government uh, just gave order to Air Serbia to organize these charter uh, uh, flights and they collected some uh, 10, around 10,000 of our citizens from all around the world. Uh, the role of Air Serbia did not finish there uh, because they, uh, although they do not have a, a, a cargo fleet, but anyhow, they reorganized and managed to uh, turn uh, uh, their planes into such. Uh, and it, it proved to be very useful because at the beginning of the pandemics, there was like a global fight to get equipment, medical equipment, protective equipment, especially ventilators, uh, protective gloves, masks, then uh, test kits, etc uh, etc et and uh, mm, due to good connections with uh, different of course vaccines afterwards uh, but because uh, due to good connections of our government with um, corporations in the west in the east with china with different countries especially china that was the biggest global producer of ventilators, protective uh, medical equipment, uh, medicines, et cetera, et cetera. We managed to provide uh, a lot of these stuff and uh, Air Serbia sent planes over there to Shanghai, to Guangzhou, to different uh, destinations. Uh, and uh, all these uh, equipment uh, were loaded and transferred to, to Belgrade. When it comes to state um, uh, health uh, system, hospitals, clinics, uh, uh, et cetera, et cetera, of course, uh, it wasn't in um, excellent uh, condition, but somehow during the, the, the crisis, um, it managed to serve the public. Uh, uh, it, well, of course, government invested quite a lot uh, in upgrade of their capacities in the equipment, um, but also a few, several new COVID hospitals were built. Also, uh, something was improvised, like a music hall was turned into a um, triage center and a COVID hospital. And uh, Mm, Belgrade Fair Hall was turned into triage center and Belgrade uh, um, and also a COVID hospital and later into vaccine uh, site, etc. etc. So there were a lot of improvisation, but also 
uh, genuine, uh, well-organized efforts to do so. And also thanks to the uh, tremendous uh, sacrifices of all medical workers, uh, we managed to, to do it because until today, these people have been working round the clock. And we also like in other countries have a lot of medical workers being infected and sometimes they would stay in COVID hospitals for weeks, even uh, several months without going home. So it's a really, it, it was and it is an uh, unthinkable uh, uh, um, uh, work and uh, deed that they, that they um, managed to, to, to deliver. Uh, when it comes to uh, government, well, at the beginning, I just wanted to point out that uh, when it comes to uh, uh, that equipment, the COVAX system and solidarity coming out of the uh, European Union and spelling over to uh, candidate countries just did not exist. And we know what happened even within the European Union. And uh, there was one significant, though very controversial, uh, gesture that our president, when welcoming a Serbian uh, plane loaded with equipment from China, uh, also he was uh, there with the Chinese ambassador and Chinese the diplomats were played also a very important role because uh, pulling their connections back in China and helping um, uh, certain governments to get this equipment. Uh, so when he, our president uh, welcomed that uh, load and that plane, uh, well, we don't have that uh, direct line to Shanghai, but these uh, uh, Air Serbia uh, pilots uh, managed to, to, to do the job. So when they- Excuse returned, me, Dragana, yes? you, can, you can continue, just I say that you are at 15 minutes. Uh, how ma uh, I, I did, I spent well, for, how much? For 15, you have four to five more, okay? Okay, thank you very much, okay. thank you very much. Anyway, he kissed like a, a, a Chinese flag um, uh, and that was the, uh, uh, that caused enormous reactions worldwide. But anyway, I will not uh, then spend much more time explaining that. Uh, government did some excellent job, but also net not that excellent. Uh, then uh, lockdown and uh, was introduced and uh, for uh, people over 65 years, actually it was like a total lockdown for a month. They couldn't go out uh, while others could go out until 5 p.m. and um, uh, couldn't go out after 5 p.m. and uh, till eight in the morning. Uh, we also, like many companies at the university, we worked online and we've been working like that, except for exams. Uh, in elementary schools, uh, classes would be divided and half of kids would go into school and uh, next day the other half because of their like mental health need to um, associate. I will go just back and say that uh, also, we, uh, we received aid and help from People's Republic of China, from Russian Federation, from Cuba. And in April 25th, four, four cargo flights with Air Serbia flew to Italy to deliver. Um, they were packed with uh, uh, aid that we gave to Italy. And also, I think Montenegro and Albania uh, gave some also maybe more symbolic but still help uh, and aid to, to Italy. So there was solidarity and awareness that other people are suffering and we shared that, uh, that feeling all the way. When it comes to uh, uh, economy, because we don't have time that I go into that, unfortunately, um, government um, introduced that helicopter aid, but also subsidies to certain companies uh, somehow owners of the restaurants, bars complained the most. We also introduced vaccine tourism as from the very beginning, you could get uh, all available, actually not all, but uh, most available vaccines from Russia, from China, from uh, Pfizer, from Britain. And if you would like to come from anywhere, 
first to be shared for free these vaccines for our neighbors from neighboring countries, but then uh, government organized sort of vaccine tourism when you could travel from anywhere, stay three weeks in a hotel and got your vaccination and uh, that vaccine passport. Uh, also, some uh, Indian citizens, a lot of them would come to Serbia and spend their quarantine time in Serbia and then go back to work in the uh, United Arab Emirates we have, because we have these uh, direct um, flights to, to there. Socially, of course, it caused uh, a lot of problems, mental and uh, people were isolated uh, in media. Uh, media was extensively covering, uh, which was uh, half helping, half damaging, the space for different opinion kept narrowing. Um, many suffered isolation. Uh, there were even uh, demonstrations of uh, dissatisfied people when one time uh, government announced a reintroduction of some measures. Uh, but very soon, I think government decided to let economy go on the expense of uh, medical uh, precautions uh, measures, and that uh, kept, uh, and it kept like that until um, today. So all in all, uh, there were some uh, good uh, moves by the government. The public remained. Uh, uh, maybe split uh, elderly uh, remained most uh, disciplined and ready to obey the rules other uh, parts of uh, population were not that uh, uh, eager to accept and so we we have these scores that and uh, we will see uh, what will happen i want to point out that our ict sector of our industry helped uh, together with agriculture helped us to economically uh, somehow buffer uh, the, the, the very negative influence of, of, of the pandemics. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dragana. It was very interesting. And um, now we are uh, giving the floor to Polina, who will speak about Russia. Polina Travert. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank Darwis uh, for the invitation to participate in this conference. I would like to uh, speak briefly about the situation with the coronavirus in Russia, about the economic consequences, and about the upcoming geopolitical challenges for the country. Uh, today in Russia, uh, there are 165,000 uh, cases. The population, you know, is 146 million inhabitants. Uh, 698 uh, 98, uh, people have died um, today. Uh, and this is a um, very stable um, number since two months. Uh, from the beginning of the pandemic, there are a little bit more than 13 million cases of coronavirus and more than 336 thousand deaths. 64% uh, um, of the population is vaccinated. Uh, the highest number of infections is in Moscow, Petersburg, and Nizhny Novgorod. The dominant variant now is Omicron, like everywhere. Uh, the vaccination is not compulsory in uh, Russia. Uh, the use of QR code for visiting public places depends on the region, uh, the situation in the region. Uh, more strict uh, sanitary measures were taken uh, always in uh, Moscow. Uh, the end of September 21, uh, there was a new wave of infections. The president signed a decree uh, on non-working days. The heads of the regions were given the right based on the local situation to extend the period of non-working days if necessary. The first case of Omicron uh, was reported um, in the early 22. In January, it dominated in Moscow and Petersburg. The number of infected uh, um, persons was foreseen at the end of December, and the government began preparations. The number of beds in hospitals uh, was even increased, and in January, funds were allocated to buy uh, more uh, medicines. 
the coronavirus Delta or Omicron uh, has been detected in all over the uh, territory. And now let's come back to the very beginning um, of the pandemic in Russia. In January 20, an operational headquarters was created in Russia to fight corona coronavirus under the authority of Deputy Prime Minister. Uh, end of January, the Russian Union of Travel Industry closed the country to Chinese tourists. And the first uh, case uh, of coronavirus uh, was reported in Moscow. Uh, air traffic um, with the European Union was limited. Uh, at the end of um, March, Russia closed its borders. Entry was allowed only for particular cases. In August 20, air traffic was gradually restored. Very fast, a big hospital uh, for patients uh, suffering from coronavirus was created in Moscow. And with the Air Army support, 16 specialized centers were built. Existing hospitals was adapted to fight the, the disease. Today in Russia, there are 100, uh, 177,000 beds. Uh, for the state, the cost of the treatment for one coronavirus patient is about 2,500 euros. The patient doesn't uh, pay, of course. Uh, in March 20, uh, there were not enough tests and protective equipment. equipment. Uh, physicians criticized the medical reform, uh, which reduced uh, beds twice compared to the Soviet period. Therefore, uh, their number had to be restored uh, very fast and even increased. Uh, medical staff uh, worked in difficult conditions, very difficult conditions, 12 hours a day. Uh, they received additional amounts uh, to their salaries, but not all the region, regions um, had paid this amount, but we'll see. Uh, the uh, volunteer movement became very, very um, active and helped a lot. In August 20, Sputnik V was registered. Vaccination began in December 20, December 20 and mass vaccination 18th uh, of January 21. Uh, by the end of February, uh, three uh, vaccines were registered in uh, Russia, Sputnik V, Epivac Corona, and Covivac. And now the young people are vaccinated by Sputnik M, M like Maladio youth um, yeah, yeah. in Russia. Uh, the Sputnik uh, light is proposed as a booster. And the vaccine uh, for children will be used in three uh, months. Uh, soon, the vaccine uh, through the nose uh, will be used also. Uh, more than 60 you know, countries have uh, recognized Sputnik and um, countries buy it, you know. Uh, the pills named uh, Esperavir uh, will also uh, start to be used uh, next week, uh, what the physicians uh, say. Uh, like everywhere in the beginning of the pandemic, education switched to distance learning in the regions where it was locked down. Uh, today, the schools and the universities uh, decide themselves how to proceed. It depends on the local situation. Uh, during the lockdown, uh, the religion uh, life also changed. All the confessions uh, were concerned like everywhere. Uh, the holidays were celebrated in self-isolation. Only the priests were allowed uh, to enter the, the churches and other places. The vote uh, on amendments on the constitution and the victory parade was uh, postponed uh, in 20. And there were practically no protest actions against the restrictive sanitary measures in the country, against wearing masks against the lockdowns, almost nothing. Uh, the government approved measures to support a small and medium um, business. Uh, the Bank of Russia also made easier uh, many conditions for loan uh, payments. And families uh, with children uh, received financial assistance also. Uh, how is the situation? Uh, Interesting situation now. Uh, there are less seriously ill uh, patients, but there are more sick children. Uh, hospitalization occurs only in most serious cases. Now uh, there are medical call centers 
to assist people uh, with symptoms, explaining what to do, the call and uh, you receive the instructions, how to proceed. Uh, in general, the number of infections, uh, infections and death rate uh, are slowly but surely decreasing. A few words about uh, the people attitude against the pandemic immediately after the first wave in the 20. In November 20, uh, people opinion uh, a poll uh, was published by the State Institute of Sociology, um, of, um, the Russian Academy of Science. It was the first big poll on this issue. According to it, only 17 um, percent felt really fair. 33 was alarm actions, but without. Um, without more, 26 hoped for better times, and 16% are completely optimistic. In the regions, uh, 40, uh, 60, uh, no, 55 uh, percent believe that the situation is not so bad, and the mass media aggravated it with um, an information uh, every, um, every day, negative information, of course. Uh, normally, 55% uh, um, was uh, considered that uh, the situation globally was not so catastrophic. Only 23 uh, things, um, uh, things uh, so. Uh, people's, uh, relative people's biggest concerns are about uh, healthcare, education, and relationship between the people in society. And something important, the people don't trust to get vaccinated. Uh, with three vaccines, everything uh, the state proposed, uh, the people uh, don't trust. It's not because the, of the vaccine. Vaccine, Russian vaccine, is, you know, it's a good vaccine. But generally, that they don't think that the, uh, they will uh, be infec um, uh, infected. I know the people uh, who... Uh, don't want, want uh, really, uh, this is a conviction. Uh, the pandemic has had impact on the economy. Uh, the crisis has hit the restaurant business, uh, tourism and entertainment industry, and passengers uh, transportation. At the same time, the internet trading, the e-commerce sector uh, benefited from the pandemic, as well as the domestic tourism. Now Russians have begun to travel much more inside the country. Uh, the pandemic has also accelerated uh, the process of uh, digitalization, uh, not only in the private sector, but also in the public sector. Uh, actually, uh, Russian economy suffered less than expected. Uh, the economic forecast was really mm, awful in the, um, beginning. The reason is that uh, in Russia, the share of the consumer services sector, which was uh, the hardest hit, is less important than in other countries. Uh, the, the measures uh, taken by the authorities are positive also. The people criticized, uh, criticized of course, that it was not enough. The other countries um, uh, paid, uh, spent more. Yes, it's true. Uh, but uh, the financial policy um, in Russia has the balance between spending and saving because of the global geopolitical situation. The government has uh, to use skillfully the uh, financial reserves of the country. Uh, in the beginning of this year, uh, uh, the average unemployment uh, rate was 4,4%. And in Moscow was zero uh, percent. The agricultural sector, construction, construction sector showed very good results in 21, and the sales of Sputnik V also increased. Uh, now, after the uh, crisis, the government declared several economic uh, priorities: digitalization, high, uh, high technologies, healthcare, and education. Uh, there are more national projects. They were canceled during the pandemic period, and now they have to be resumed. 
Russia uh, has to assure its economic independence, increasing the national um, produ uh, production. And everything will depend on investments. Today, Russia changed also its, uh, its uh, um, geopolitical uh, strategy. China becomes priority and a lot depends on this cooperation, not only economically, but also politically. Uh, in the new economical environment, Russia is looking for new partners in Asia, Africa, and Latin America. Russia now is coming out uh, of the pandemic and 30 years after the collapse uh, of uh, uh, the Soviet system, the country is facing a new era of alliances and relationships. The only thing the country needs is internal stability to order to meet new challenges and achieve new economic and political goals. Time will tell, like we say uh, in Russia. Thank you very much for your uh, attention. Be safe and be healthy. Thank you very much, Paulina. It was a very well structured uh, presentation and uh, special thanks for you for limiting your speech uh, less than 15 minutes. <laughs> yes, yes. 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 I tried to. I tried to. Thank you very much. And I hope <laughs> Or the presentation in a, in a published form or something like that. And then now I would give the floor to Darvish and uh, I ask uh, him. Yeah. To Shall I read, read the message from Bruno? Yes, definitely. Yeah, okay. Okay, I will read the uh, extended the abstract of Bruno because he, he is ill and he is under medical treatment. So he cannot uh, present uh, his uh, uh, communication or his paper, uh, but he, uh, he sent me this uh, text. So uh, in, in English and in French, but uh, I will read uh, the one in, in English, of course. So here you are. COVID-19 as a revelation of the impasses of the European model, the EU's result have shown that its model of free and undistorted competition has made it impossible to maintain its effective public health system. The almost complete silence of the Western media on the result achieved in Eastern Asia, Cuba, Venezuela, Belarus, or even in Sub-Saharan Africa in the fight against the COVID pandemic 19 compared to the almost daily comparisons appearing on TV screen and in major newspapers and magazine with EU countries or the US is not only a sign of the aggravated provincialism of the Western media and elites, but also of their panic in front of uncomfortable facts. All the more so, as one notes that the intervention of political leaders, as well as scientific advisors to European governments, also carefully avoided making any systematic comparative analysis with any country or area outside European Union, except for the USA. Except, of course, when the results were catastrophic, as in Brazil or India at the beginning of the pandemic. The EU countries with a few minor differences have generally not managed to avoid an hecatomb and simultaneously the loss of basic civil liberties because the hospital system has not kept up with the shock due to the absence of local clinics capable of providing a policy of prevention and daily care of the sick because of the delay and sometimes blockage in the search for drugs and because of a policy of all RNA vaccines, which in fact benefited the transatlantic big pharma, but prevented the global pooling of all vaccines, various such a policy would have slowed down the appearance of new variants from the outset and undoubtedly could have helped to contain the disease. The fault 
are not only due to unpreparedness or incompetence, they, they stem from the very functioning of the current dominant system, which is out of breath and uncreative, something that had already been noticed during the recent economic crisis, but which was exer exacerbated on the occasion of this pandemic and which thus demonstrated the whole planet, to the whole planet at best, its sterility and at worst, its harmfulness. Let us note on this occasion that Western countries have, with a few nuances, the same political and social system, whereas the countries that have demonstrated more success against the pandemic may have very different systems, but they all have a few points in common, a strong social discipline, a tendency toward collectivism, and an active role for the state in the field of economics, social life, and health policies. This is worth remembering because Europe was known until the mid 1970s as the homeland of the so-called welfare state with a strong social policy and a high quality of healthcare. Today, it is more likely that Eastern Asia and some non-aligned countries in Latin America are much more clearly able to rebuild a social dynamic and a health policy that aims to meet the needs of all. That's all, thank you. Thank you very much, Darvish. I would uh, like to ask uh, um, Marco if he wants to. Take... Yes, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> okay, then I, the floor is yours. I think you can manage this question and answer section. Allora, uh, I'm not very good to manage the question and answer. I, I, um, uh, I need your support. We do together. Um, just a question uh, uh, coming, uh, three reflection coming uh, from uh, the presentation. First, uh, uh, the efficiency of public service, uh, because uh, we have seen, for instance, uh, uh, in Italy now, the people after years and years of privatization of public service, now, because the pandemic, people is asking, please go back and make a strong sanitary, public sanitary system. Second question, so my question is, uh, what are the experience in your country? Uh, for instance, Polina remind the role of voluntary. Now in Italy or some states of Europe, uh, the sanitary survey works only because they have the voluntary support. That is very important uh, to create a balance between public and private. Second, uh, the psychological effect of the people, because uh, after so long pe period, we see many, many change in the aptitude uh, not only of young people or the children, but um, in the um, uh, social groups. Uh, if you notice something uh, similar in your country, and third, uh, in the working place, uh, uh, the smart working, uh, the new organization is coming something permanent, both uh, in public uh, working place and in private uh, working place. So if you notice some trends in this direction, in, in, uh, even in your countries, uh, many companies are decentralizing work, working at home is coming uh, permanent praxis uh, established by labor contracts. So uh, the, it, the, it, this is a structural change. These are my question to the speakers. I don't see if you have other uh, questions from the chat. If uh, somebody else wants to raise a question, please use this uh, hand button, raise hand. If not, I would uh, give the floor. Oh, yes, Nadia. 
the floor is yours to raise a question. And then if we have a couple of questions, then I will give the floor to the presenters and then- Yeah, yes, of course. Nadia, I see your hand up. Nadia Ben Mansour. Uh, you are muted and we don't even don't uh, see you. Oh, 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 okay, probably it was not, uh, uh, it, it was uh, just um, by chance. Okay, so then if there is no other question, then uh, I, I would like to ask who wants to answer first. Okay. Paulina, maybe? I could first. <laughs> Thank you very much. I was first, so I could also answer uh, uh, first. First, uh, of course, I uh, uh, agree with your remark, Professor uh, uh, Marco, because I think that the main um, main uh, problem in foreign healthcare lies in the so-called shock 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 therapy of uh, Pro Professor Balzerovich, neoliberal shock therapy at the 90s. He was also a minister of finance at the beginning of 21 uh, century. And uh, uh, he understated uh, health premiums and instead of financing from the budget institution created bureaucratic national health fund, which, uh, which, which is a technocratic uh, governance of, of health as a instrument of neoliberal uh, values, which uh, as we can now clearly see finally, we of course can see it in, in the past, in the last 50 years, but uh, um, Corona crisis show us uh, clearly uh, destroy uh, the, 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 the health care. Uh, which is uh, we, which we can uh, see at the uh, data, and of course uh, uh, we should uh, change it uh, as it was previous. It was uh, 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 financed from the budget in the before the capitalism uh, started in the uh, socialist uh, Poland, and uh, it uh, would be better because the lack of uh, bureaucracy and uh, proce proce procedure which in, uh, in, uh, in the essence uh, destroy, uh, you know, uh, doctor feeling of patients, you know, which are in uh, every cases are different. Yes, but now it's a procedure, procedures. Um, uh, I, I few minutes uh, talk with my, uh, with my uh, uh, doctor because he phoned to me. Uh, I wait uh, for one week. And he, uh, she told me that he kept for me uh, seven minutes, not, not, nothing more. And uh, it's worth to add that in Poland in 2017, uh, young doctors went on hunger strike, uh, demanding rises, improved working conditions, and on increase in expenditure on healthcare from very small 4% of uh, GDP to uh, 68 uh, So. Uh, it was three years ago, but the propaganda of uh, uh, new governments, uh, which are governing now Poland, which was isn't as neoliberal as previous, in this case was, you know, also awful because uh, 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 this young uh, um, with ideas in his, uh, in their mind, uh, peoples was uh, criticized very, very, very. very uh, strong. Uh, um, for a comparison in a previous system of Poland, socialistic Poland, uh, there was uh, about 12% uh, of uh, GDP for uh, healthcare. Uh, when it comes to the second uh, uh, question, uh, you know, now, for example, at, um, at the children psychiatry, uh, children must wait for a visit for eight months. Children which what need help now, the procedure, procedure give them eight uh, months for waiting. And also in private sector, they must wait because of the lack of the doctors. But of course in private sector, not 
every uh, uh, parents have uh, money for it, yes, to pay. So the uh, situation is, is, is horrible. And we, uh, I, I think from a humanistic standpoint, when we observe the system, we, we must look at the, you know, the weaker one and the and, 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 uh, situation in the children's secretary show us the pathological of uh, our, 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 our system. The money- like that, oh, thank you. If you don't mind, I would like to give the floor to others, but before that, if our presenters uh, uh, don't mind, I would like to give the floor to some uh, of the audience who want to, uh, to ask. The first was Bidyut Mohanty. Do you hear me? Your hand is up, yes. Okay. We are listening to your question and I ask you to try to uh, hold the time limit at one or two. Uh, you will be very brief. See, first of all, you know, nobody, I mean, I want to know the sex composition of the COVID patients, men and women, that is one. And secondly, in what way women were impacted by the COVID? Very good question. Thank you very much. If there is no other question, then I would like to give the floor to uh, Dragana or Polina, who wants to start. Okay, I can start uh, maybe with answering the, the last question. At the beginning, uh, it was said but by the medical doctors that um, women are less, uh, actually that they, they are more resilient to uh, the COVID virus, uh, COVID-19, um, actually COVID SARS second or something, what was the name of the virus. But uh, later it proved not to be true because we could see uh, almost equal number of infected women as uh, men in hospitals and also it was said that the children were totally out of reach but unfortunately later it was also proved not to be true uh, especially with the new uh, variants of, uh, of a virus and uh, how women were infected because uh, like in Serbia they, they just um, are very active they work everywhere in schools, they even dominate as uh, school teachers and professors in some other professions. Um, so they, um, and as medical workers, they are also doctors, uh, assistant nurses, technicians, um, cleaning ladies in, in schools, in hospitals, everywhere. So um, almost uh, all of them, and and uh, there is also there are a lot of cases that the elderly people, either men or women, were infected by uh, their grandchildren or children who didn't stay isolated but uh, had to go to work or go out somewhere or even go to, uh, for a holiday uh, during the summertime. And then when they returned home, either for because of living together or just going visiting parents or even sometimes visiting them in nursing houses, homes, they would uh, just transfer the, 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 the virus to them. So uh, when there is a difference of how men or women were infected, uh, these are the facts that I'm aware of. And uh, should I now answer uh, all, all these points where Professor Riccieri uh, was? Um, yes, of course. I just would like to ask you uh, to to try to do it short, uh, short time because. Uh, could you please just remind me what was the first one? I just uh, lost some focus. Sorry. Uh, public and private. Oh yes, service. yes, yes. Thank you. Uh, as I said, in Serbia we have. Uh, uh, a dominant uh, uh, state-owned uh, um, health system. And we also have a private uh, health, um, well, health system, which is smaller, but uh, totally operates on a different financial uh, scale than government. Like if you are insured, actually it's a complement, it, it's a obligatory insurance. Before I got paid, 
my uh, net income uh, i had to pay into um, a pension system and also health system and social security system but if i want to go a private hospital i will have to pay out of my pocket so they are sort of a totally independent parallel and in this crisis they proved to be highly immoral because they didn't join the fight of the state-owned health system but they would provide some services like you could do checkings or uh, some scans or mri or other uh, tests uh, with them but then they uh, increased uh, prices several folds uh, so it was proved uh, very, very well that Serbia somehow managed to preserve state health system together with some like uh, uh, we have this Institute for Tropical Diseases that produces our regular um, flu vaccine. And I think now they produce uh, 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 through cooperation with Galimea, Russian research institution, they uh, sort of produce uh, Sputnik V. And now we are, they are under negotiation to produce a Sputnik light that uh, booster the uh, version of Sputnik vaccine. Uh, so these institutions that were under discussion uh, to privatize, like because previous governments, more neoliberal, were talking, oh, this is just a burden to state budget. We should get rid of them. And unfortunately, they managed to destroy so many important institutions but somehow this uh, Torlak Institute survived, although it's a reference institution and a world famous actually among uh, their colleagues. Uh, they, they are damaged, but somehow they survived. And now I hope the state uh, uh, would invest much more because it's not just about equipment, it's about people. Uh, and uh, now you have somehow to recoup all these resources. So I think that many governments uh, uh, worldwide uh, realized that if it's uh, that uh, health is not about business, although for sure they are under tremendous influence of uh, pharmaceutical corporations. And uh, as we know, we heard that uh, in the plenary session when they make decisions, they hear uh, from our Chinese colleague, they hear uh, arguments of multinational corporations, but much less of a public. But I think these uh, crisis pandemics uh, prove to all of us how important it is to have uh, a solid health system. It doesn't matter if beds are empty, uh, we might need them and we might provide uh, that these resources, they are equally important as um, uh, as, as others, and we shouldn't have that uh, commercialist uh, look at the health system, educational system, and, and others that would create quality of life Thank you uh, for very us, much, and that in crisis uh, would just protect our lives. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much. Uh, sorry for interrupting you. We are, it's very interesting what you say, that, but you know, uh, our, our time is going out, so please, Paulina, if you want to. I agree completely with Ragana because I see the same uh, tendencies in Russia. Uh, first of all, about the woman, uh, you know, the Russian woman is very active and uh, she was everywhere, uh, like teacher, like um, medical staff. Uh, it was um, uh, a normal, a big responsibility for women. Um, uh, second, uh, we understood uh, everybody, I, um, uh, I think, uh, the importance of the state. Because without the good, really good organization, the good work of the government, criticized, of course, but, but uh, normally uh, they, uh, um, they presented a, a very good organization. Uh, during all this uh, uh, crisis, of course, um, uh, uh, it was not uh, um, easy. Uh, and the importance of the state in uh, sectors of the health, uh, because uh, the reform was um, a very uh, hard. I, I told that uh, um, the number of beds was reduced twice with the same uh, number of uh, um, infected people. 
to understand that it was impossible um, uh, to uh, to solve the problem immediately. But the mobilization, the real mobilization during uh, all this period, was very important to restore the number and to increase the number. The army um, participate uh, and the, uh, the state participate. That now uh, the Russian people understood that without the state, without the uh, national project, without the without social uh, po policy, it's impossible uh, to survive in the situation, the exclusive um, uh, situation, geopolitical. You understand that for Russia, it's uh, more difficult than for other countries. This is a national mobilization, the only way uh, to, um, to go um, uh, ahead. Uh, and the private sector, it's very important, but now uh, the control from the state is uh, on, um, uh, it's very appreciated. Uh, and uh, the efficiency uh, about uh, uh, the sector, uh, private sector, yes, um, the crisis, uh, um, the pandemic crisis permitted to manage more efficiently um, the companies because of the uh, digitalization. Now uh, it's very positive, uh, like I, the idea to invest, you have to invest more and more the high technologies. And now, uh, now everybody is conscious that it's uh, the future. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Gratian, do you want to say something about the gender composition of the situation in Poland? No, no, I don't. I don't have more information. Okay. I uh, I just want to uh, to add to this discussion that I don't. I think that uh, a trust is also uh, needed from the side of the population, and it depends on the class content of the of the state. So there is no such thing as the state because we have Hungary, um, a state, a very strong state, I would say, and and we are the fourth global fourth in the very sad list of the death, corona death per 1 million population. Uh, and also we have had the same system as the Serbia had, uh, what Dragana described. We have this uh, um, public health, uh, uh, nonetheless, uh, the, this system hasn't got the, the assistance uh, and finances and, uh, and um, uh, have from the state, what uh, it would need it. And therefore, I think this is the uh, this is the reason for this very bad solution. But I don't want to take the floor. Uh, I, uh, we have some few minutes remain. So if you have other questions or comments, please feel free to do that. Just, uh, just a little comment, uh, Anna Maria, it's okay. Yes. Uh, uh, I do not represent Bruno's uh, thought, but uh, it seems to me that uh, also Bruno's uh, abstract is, uh, corresponds to the, or the, 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 the presentation of the, the three colleagues. So I just wonder, it is a provocative question, if uh, there are all the four uh, speakers uh, are a left uh, wing uh, how do we, scholars. Uh, that's uh, that's a provocative uh, comments. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anything else? Any other comments or questions? Arcia Calzolari. Well, I raised I raised the hand for Dimitris because he didn't know how to how to <laughs> raise his hand. So he wants to speak actually. So if you <laughs> okay, uh, I don't see uh, where is uh, Dimitris. <laughs> He's there. He's connected. Yes, but he he is muted. Dimitris, you are muted. Yes. No, no, it's I'm I'm unmuted, but I cannot find uh, how to. Ah, <laughs> you won't see me, or even. No, we are, yes, we I am. We see okay you now. now. Yes. So I have I have uh, uh, two two main questions. The one thing uh, is that uh, how the there is a, so to say a split, a split between people who believe to. To the one extreme is the zero COVID strategy as applied by China, 
and other plant economies. On the other hand, there is the herb immunity theory, which is uh, the darling of neoliberal capitalism. So I, I would like that the participants uh, take some position on this fundamental split and uh, tell us their opinion. And the second thing is we have seen, uh, uh, we have heard and seen a lot of, of absolutely incredible uh, uh, conspiracy theories about uh, coronavirus and eh? COVID. And we have seen also a new kind of far right which has used this, this, uh, um, this conspiracy theories to create a public and to confiscate uh, the, so to say, the radicalism in the, in the West. Uh, what is the opinion of the participants about those phenomena? Because this is also a central phenomenon, especially in the, in the Western world, but not only, even Russia, which was able to produce a Sputnik vaccine very quickly, we Sorry. see that half of the population there believes to nonsense. No, 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 no. It, uh, this is a huge uh, political and intellectual and international problem. W what is happening here? I mean, how they explain no, this? Thank you very much, Dmitry. So our time is over, but I think uh, we, I, can, I can give one, one, one minute to all the presenters. So please move us to uh, start with the one minute answer. I asked you, Polina, because the last time you were the last, so you were you are oh. the first one. Uh, about uh, the vaccine, uh, the problem is that the Russian people in general don't like vaccines. During the Soviet period, it was not if I want, if I don't want. You have to. It's not a question. Uh, do are you agree? Do uh, I don't agree? No. It's, it, it's not like this. It was completely different. It was very good, I, I think. So now you want, you don't want, and many people don't want because, because I don't know why. This very traditional mentality. Even young people now. And the economy and the yes, it's, it's not because the vaccine is, is bad. No, no. It's not because everybody thinks that Pfizer is better or Moderna is better. No, not completely different, like vision. No, I, uh, it's not my problem. I, I will not be sick. Uh, I will not be infected. And I prefer traditional medicine. It's better. It's sure there, I, I uh, lyman with, uh, with tea, with I don't know what. It's really, it's really like, like, like this. And even and very intelligent people. And now uh, 64, it's a big result, believe me, <laughs> because in the beginning, nobody wants. And, and uh, I repeat, it, not of the Russian production, in general, the, the idea of the vaccination, because in the, uh, during the Soviet people, uh, period, it, it, wa it was the policy of the state to vaccinate everybody. Mandatory. Yes. And now, we, yeah, uh, yes, it was like this. That's why in the beginning, uh, the, we, we had less infected people in, re in reality. Thank you. Uh, well, we good Delta. I mean, with Delta because Omicron is um, is different. Like, um, if I... thank you, thank uh, you, Polina. That's why it's not. Uh, <laughs> we do it in our <laughs> Dragana, do you want to say? Okay, what, there what, is what one theory. Is? Yes, thank you. There is one theory that people in former socialist countries do not very much trust uh, their, their states. Uh, and also, uh, yeah, there is a, a wide gap between uh, all the people who almost every, all of them have been three times vaccinated and uh, uh, middle-aged or younger persons who might think that they do not trust that quickly made vaccines or they will never get sick or maybe it's like made up uh, disease, even that. Uh, when it comes to total lockdown or herd uh, immunity, uh, which even sounds horrible, <laughs> but I think it's totally unacceptable, like in Serbia, in Europe, in, um, in our countries, uh, where you have to have like a freedom of choice. I think uh, people would not accept, uh, like it's unthinkable to they be like tracked willingly and uh, will fully minded and uh, or, or locked down um, uh, like in China, it's totally not 
acceptable or even unthinkable. To have herd immunity, it, uh, it sounds horrible. And I think also most of the people would just strongly reject it. So I think uh, nobody ever dared to, to say it out. Uh, although it, you might uh, conclude that some people in government think like that, but general public, no. I think most of the people would like, I'm going to do what I can. Uh, uh, you know, polite people would protect others, uh, less considerate would just go their own way. Hopefully they will not got infected, but both ways are not acceptable. Thank you very much, and uh, grazie. Uh, yes, uh, when it comes to the Polish people, uh, we uh, was uh, we, we were uh, uh, last 30 years under the pressure of uh, hegemony of idea of freedom. So it is a very important feature of our national character. So we, uh, from other side, criticize our uh, healthcare, and from other side see that the China methods is, uh, you know, so bad because uh, this, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, destroy the uh, so-called freedom. But, and when it comes to the uh, second, um, second um, uh, question, uh, I think we should uh, see what happened a few days ago in Beijing when China and Russia issued a lengthy joint statement. Because in one point, uh, I quote, both sides stressed the biological military activities carried out by the United States and its allies at home and abroad have raised serious concerns and questions in the international community about compliance with the convention. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think it was a very nice uh, uh, sentence for uh, for uh, the closing uh, uh, conclusion. Uh, thank you very much for all the participants. Unfortunately, uh, uh, we do not have time. And yeah. I, I give the floor to Darvish. Thank you, thank you. Wonderful, wonderful panel, well managed. Bravo, Ana Maria and Marco. And thank you for the speakers. Uh, very interesting, lively and uh, provocative sometimes. Uh, thank you very much. And in 10 minutes, so now it's break. Ten minutes. We go to America. Okay. So uh, within <laughs> thank ten you. minutes. Bye bye. Thank you very yeah. much. Bye -bye. See you thank later. you very much. Thank, thank you, you thank to you. all, to everybody. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. See you. See you in ten minutes. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank Anna you. Maria. <laughs> thank, thank you, you Polina. <laughs> Bella. Uh, we, we will go to Bolivia to uh, Brazil, uh, to Cuba, and to United States of America. Oh, no. Okay. Yes. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yes. <laughs> yes. I stay here now. <laughs> yes. We will go. Yeah. Yeah. OK. OK. See you Ciao, later. everybody. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. See you later. Excusez-moi, est-ce que Monsieur Bazier est là? Oui, je suis là. Non, ah, voilà. je suis là. Euh, oui, je vous ai envoyé un message dans le chat parce qu'il y a un de vos étudiants, Kawet Matisse, il me semble, oui. Oui. qui, euh, en fait, il a re rempli son formulaire et j'ai essayé de lui envoyer donc, le lien, mais ça me met un message d'erreur. Donc, je pense qu'il a dû faire une erreur dans son adresse mail, donc il faut lui demander oui. de re-remplir le formulaire. Oui, j'ai communiqué avec lui tout à l'heure. Ah, moi, moi Est-ce que je peux vous donner maintenant le courriel avec lequel je correspond avec lui <rire> euh, oui, vous mettez le secrétariat euh, Master Asie en copie, du coup, et ça ira. Ah, ok, d'accord. D'accord. Si vous écrire... voulez me, me, pardon, vous vouliez me donner son adresse mail, c'est ça Oui, c'est ça. Est-ce est -ce que c'est que... possible Oui, oui, oui vous pouvez la, la 